Well, hey there, everybody. Hey there, all my Instagram peeps up there. And hey there to all of my wonderful Facebook lovelies. It's so good to be here with you. If it's Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we stop everything in the mayhem and yumminess here at our design studio. We like to come out and talk to you live about what's happening in your life, in your design life. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the Interior Design Advocate. And I love taking your questions live. Hey, Instagrammers, I'm real sorry about that overhead shot and all the light that's in your head there with our, oh, our ceiling light. We just really do not get the whole live Instagramming yet thing. So our Instagram shot isn't quite there yet. Anyway, here to talk to you about accessorizing a bathroom. And if my mouth is moving strangely, I just got Invisaligns. And I have to tell you, I hate it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'll stop complaining about it sometime around October, Katie, in my... Kate's like, yeah, stop complaining now, girl. <laughs> anyway, so here you go. If my teeth look a little weird, that's what's going on. I don't have a disease. Do want to talk to you about accessorizing your bathrooms, however. And next week, we're going to be talking about how to renovate a bathroom without losing your marbles. But I thought it would be fun this week to actually do something that had more to do with a more budget-friendly way to go, which would be accessorizing. So if you have questions about accessorizing a bathroom, type them into me here on the, if you're with me on uh, the Facebook live, and I'd love to take your questions live. Instagrammers can't take your questions live. You're too far away. And we literally have my phone up on my computer screen with like chewing gum and tape. It's crazy. Anyway, when you accessorize your home, you always need to think about editing. Every accessory has to have a real reason for being where you have it. And I teach more about this in my design CPR course. So without going that down to all the weeds, because we don't have the time, I want to tell you that when it comes to accessorizing a bathroom, you need to be brutal and edit. And I'm talking brutal. So here are three tips to help you accessorize a bathroom like a boss. And the first one is probably something you won't expect me to start with, but it has to do with editing what is underneath the counters get stuff out of the cabinets out of the drawers women hear me now how big is your face how much makeup do you need how many hairbrushes do you need i did this exa exact exercise for myself the other night and i was throwing away extra nail polishes and lipstick shades i thought oh, do i want this lip color well it's from the year one maybe i'll hold on to it no get rid of it get rid of whatever you don't absolutely need because all that stuff that is stuffing up your drawers and your cabinets, it's going to start to invade your countertops. Don't do it. So you wanna make sure that you have ample storage. And usually most people, whether it's master bath or guest bath, or certainly the powder room, most people are fighting for storage. So make sure you're really being, you know, totally, totally Martha Stewart, beautifully set up in those drawers, you know, no extra stuff that you don't need so that you have accessory room on your counters. So once you've brutally edited all of your paraphernalia for making yourself the gorgeous woman that I know you are, next is time to think about accessorizing and beautifying like a design boss. What we designers do in the professional world in bathrooms is we look to beautify on the safe surfaces. Walls are always great but be careful with artwork in your bathrooms. If you were on vacation a couple weeks ago this summer, I know a lot of you were traveling and you picked up a beautiful watercolor. Watercolors do not, even behind glass and framed, they do not wanna be in wet environments where there's a steamy shower going. So be careful in terms of what type of artwork you're hanging. I wouldn't put the really expensive good stuff in the bathroom, but you can do something beautiful. You can do architectural salvage. You can do a beautiful framed piece from a framer, something that was just a couple hundred bucks or something that you found at a flea market. So you can do interesting things on your wall, do interesting things with your lighting. And then when it comes to the actual accessories for the countertop, Here's tip number three, because tip number two was look to your walls and lighting to do great things for accessorizing a bathroom. Well, beyond the obvious for accessorizing the counters, you know, beyond the obvious pretty tissue holder cover or the, the pretty, um, you, know, uh, you know, decorative box to hold some items in, be brutal. Don't do too much. One, maybe two clean items that just hold a little bit of weight add a little bit of height, whether it's a beautiful ceramic vase, maybe a pair of, of, of vases, 
placed, you know, next to each other in the center. Perhaps you're in your master bath. You've got a sink on either side, his sink, her sink. You need something in the center to add a little bit of weight. And that might be right behind a pretty soap dish or soap dispenser. That's it. That's all you need. Um, you can do a really simple, pretty candle holder, pillar candle on top. We're accessorizing an extensive residence right now. And in the powder rooms where we have space, where we have room, we'll do a pretty small, um, in terms of footprint diameter, a, a small statue, piece of sculpture, something interesting right behind a pretty soap dish, soap dispenser. That's it. There's not a ton of space on countertops in bathrooms because like a kitchen, bathrooms are all about function. So mistakes I see some of you making when you're sending me pictures of your projects, and by the way, if you have a question about accessorizing a bathroom right now, please feel free to type it in so I can take your question live. I'm almost done with my little mini lesson. But when I see some of the pictures that you guys are sending to me when you're working on your projects, I'm seeing that you are putting a ton ton of accessories in small spaces. Watch it because when you do that, you start to create a lot of visual chaos, a lot of visual clutter. And a little pet peeve I have for bathrooms, I am not a great lover of the shelves protruding um, in bathrooms that are small and tight. Um, a lot of people like doing those, you know, uh, above the, the toilet. If you have to, you can. Sometimes it can be nicely done if it's a glass shelf and very nicely and specifically um, accessorized, but truly in the bath, master bath, guest bath, powder room, less is best. And remember, if you are doing the shelves that are protruding, that is more weight moving towards you. So just make sure that the space is big enough to handle it. And if you are doing those cute little shelves behind whatever, above the toilet, or that's usually where they, people, people are doing them, please don't use those to also hold, you know, your makeup brushes and the extra lipsticks. Remember, we've cleared out all the cabinets and drawers so you have space beneath to hide away the non-beautiful things. So you're just keeping it really zen and pretty inside the bath. So if you have a question that you'd like to type in about accessorizing a bathroom that you're perhaps working on or trying to facelift, by all means, put that question in while I'm here live. I'm glad to take your question live as well. Next week, we're going to be talking all about how to renovate a bath without a bathroom, a master bath, without losing your marbles, without losing your sanity. It is probably one of the top two uncomfortable projects to do in your home. So I'll be giving you some tips on that, but we thought this week it would be nice to just go in low cost and easy and talk about accessorizing. So if I have any live questions, I don't think there are any questions coming in live, but if you have one, feel free to scooch one in. I'm getting a lot of hellos from people. So hello to Stacy, hello to Grace, um, hello to Sharon, <laughs> hello to, to Chapis. So nice to see you here with me. I love being here every Tuesday. Uh, last call on questions. If you've got one live, type it in. Katie, I don't have my cute little very high-tech sign all about Instagram. Some of you guys are already with us on Instagram, but let me tell you, if you're not already with us on Instagram, where are you? Get there. So give us a follow on Instagram. We're at decorating.genius on Instagram. That's our handle if you want to see what we're up to at our design studio, what inspires us, but also so we can keep teaching you lessons, et cetera. That's at decorating.genius. Okay, lovelies, we've got a lot to do here still at the design studio. Oh, here's my high-tech sign. Oh no, this is, that's for our design studio. If you wanna know what we're doing in our design studio, that would be at IDH Designs. And that's where you'll see what inspires us, uh, what we're working on. It's a little more serious feed, but we have a lot of fun at I don't have all my high-tech signs. It's the Invisalign. I think they were too tight, and it was just sort of squishing me. We have a question coming. There are questions coming. Katie's telling me there are questions coming. Here we go. Debbie wants to know, is there a pic how about a picture over the toilet? Love it. Absolutely. Just be careful, Debbie. Like I said, if you're in a humid environment, even a guest bathroom, if you have guests that will close that door and steam up the place, be careful about oils. They don't like a lot of water. And definitely, you do not want to do anything in the way of, um, uh, you know, a watercolor that will be miserable and could get damaged. 
in a, a watery environment. But I love the idea of doing something, um, a, a decorative picture over the toilet. And in fact, Debbie, you don't have to do a single picture. You can do a stack, north, south. You can do pretty black and white images, take family photo pho photographs and you know convert them into black and white. And you can just put them very simply in a beautiful white uh, bathroom, that sort of thing. Okay, so Nora wants to know, a large wall in a bathroom, what would you put on it? Put on it. A large wall in a bathroom, what would you put on it? Nora, I say go big or go home. You know, if you've got some space in a large master bath, some of you have master baths that also um, are two story, you know, vaulted, by all means, go for a nice 30 by 30, 36 by 36. Why not? Um, you can Google something called a gicle. I've talked about these before. How do you spell that, Katie? G I C L E E. Basically, um, a gicle looks like an oil, it's like it's trying to look like an oil painting, but it's really not. It's um, a, a, a digitally printed something that has been stretched on a canvas to look like an oil painting. They're not very costly. That's a lot of what you're seeing at Home Goods, actually. Um, so by all means, you can use that um, on that large wall because if you Google around to some great websites, you can find sites that will do the same piece print in different sizes so that you can go larger and certainly on a large wall uh, Nora you can also do a duo a, you know like a diptych or a triptych oh you know what we're doing right now in a dressing room for a, a couple there are certain wallpapers that look like murals and what we're going to do is take this really cool organic-y viney well, it looks more like not vine what's that tree that has the long weeping willow Thank you. It's the Invisaligns. They're just, you know, tightening all the brain cells here. It looks like Weeping Willow, and it comes in different colors. And we're going to do either a, a duo or like a triptych and have that wallpaper stretched and gallery wrapped and turn that into art. So that's those are just some quick ideas for you there, Nora. Um, hopefully that helps you. Lisa is asking, in a small, narrow guest bathroom with a pedestal sink, what do you think of a closed decorative cabinet above the toilet? Lisa, I hate it. I don't love it. I have been asked by clients to build very narrow cabinetry into bathrooms. We once did something in a corner of a bath across from the toilet, um, but it was custom just to kind of hide away all the stuff. That's the challenge with those beautiful pedestal sinks. Where do you put everything? So if you are, Lisa, I don't know if you are renting and if, and if in your, um, in, if in the bath that you're using to dress in every morning, you have a pedestal sink. Sometimes people will do a really pretty vel Velcroed um, draping around that sink to hide a multitude of sins beneath. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, that looks so granny. No, I think it was Mark Sykes did something at the Kips Bay Show House a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple months ago now, two months ago. It looked fabulous, it's tailored and gorgeous, coordinated with the shower curtain that he had built in this bathroom that he did at the Kips Bay. So you can do that around that pedestal sink to hide all the stuff that you need and just put things in baskets. But I am not a lover of those things over the toilet. I'm sorry. Most of them look kind of cheap. And um, But that said, necessity is the mother of invention. If you absolutely need storage and that it's the only way you can get it, do it. I'd rather see you have a pretty little decorative basket that is in the corner of the bath and stack your toilet paper. Put, you know, put your toilet paper in there as if you're doing an arrangement in this pretty container, in this pretty, you know, floor basket, just over in Pier 1, looking for a, a basket to put a fantastic um, fiddle leaf fig I just got for my birthday, named him Stanley. Um, great baskets over there. The pricing I thought was pretty fair, too. So you can find some pretty decorative things, hopefully, that you can use for storage without having to resort, resort to the... Um, the thing over the toilet device. So there you go. That was a long answer, Lisa. I'm sorry. Um, Joanne wants to know, what are your thoughts of handling something other than a decorative tea towel above the toilet? The towel bar holders are part of the tile. Uh, I'm thinking of a bin that holds small plants. What are your thoughts in handling something other than a decorative tea towel above the toilet? The toilet bar holders are part of the tile. Oh, so your toilet bar holder is there. So you want to know if you can put a small plant on a 
on a toilet, I not I would totally do it. Pretty orchid, beautiful cactus, totally. I like it. If, if I'm understanding you, Joanne, absolutely. Noreen is saying hi, hello to Noreen. Gicle is spelled. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> G I C L E E. I don't want to smile. I'm so self-conscious about my teeth now. G I C L E E. I'll be honest with you. Don't tell my orthodontist. I took those Invisalign things off. So my teeth are out of jail right now and they are singing a happy song. But anyway, there you go. Stacy Mullins wants to know, Donna, you might not remember, but you answered a question for me about LED lights. Here's the result. I literally just finished. Here's a photo. Stacy. I will look for you in the private Facebook group. I know you're one of my peeps, one of my, one of my lovelies that takes one of my courses, but I'm not going to be pulling up a picture now, but I definitely want to see what you sent in. Grace says, I have two vanities. One is 11 feet wide. The other is five feet wide. Just worked on a bathroom. I think I know what you're going to ask me. Should I use a flower arrangement on only the larger vanity or is it do I want, or is it to have small flowers on both sides? It is a large bathroom with tall ceilings. Grace, it's a great question. And I had a feeling you're going to ask me if you had to keep everything, you know, even Steven between the two counters. Nope. As long as you don't have to do the exact same accessory treatment is what I'm saying, Grace. As long as you stand back and look at the bath and, and what you've accessorized and think, okay, do I have enough weight in this area? Do I have enough weight on the five foot counter? Do I have enough weight on the 11 foot counter? Is there enough empty space, negative space that things are breathing as well, not crowding? Um, you're fine. Um, so here's the thing though. I have an opinion on faux flowers. If you're going to do faux flowers, make sure they're the best quality you can get, Grace. And in a bathroom, you know, with the makeup powder flopping around and the hair stuff flopping around, make sure that you blow dry that flower arrangement, not to style it, but to blow all the dust and junk off of it because they can be such total dust collectors. All right. So that's just something for you to think about. But I bless it, Grace. I think you can go for it on just the one counter. Um, Stacy, no problem. Hugs and kisses to you. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a way for me to post a picture, Stace. I just don't know what it is. So there you go. Um, Debbie, wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Nora, thank you. You're welcome to you. Linda, would you ever use grass cloth in a powder room? Would I ever use a grass cloth in a powder room? Linda, does a bear look for honey in the woods? Girlfriend, yes. But here's what I wouldn't do because I do a lot of grass cloths and I do a lot of them in bathrooms. Do not let the paper installer wrap your, um, your light switch plate. I used to let my guys do that. Let my guys, I used to have my guys do that. And over time, you know, people wash their hands and they, they dry them, but not great. And over time, that water hitting that grass cloth, it will wear away the paper on the plate. So you're better off just doing, you know, a, a simple back plate on the, on the light switch, leaving, you know, by the, you know, to leave the bathroom or to turn off the lights in the bathroom, but absolutely go with grass cloth. And there are so many great grass cloths out there now. There are printed grass cloths. There are um, metallics. I mean, oh, fabulous. Do it, do it, do it. Love grass cloth in a powder room. Also, it's a less expensive way to enjoy grass cloth because you don't need a ton of it because it's a powder room. So there you go. Joanne, so sorry. I think I should have said hanging above the toilet. Oh, Joanne, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang a plant above the toilet. Mm -mm. I would do artwork. That's it. And if, and then on the, on the back of the toilet, on, you know, on the tank, maybe you want to do a pretty plant, something small that's, you know, not vining and trailing down that could get kind of creepy. Um, and then just, you know, there you go. Just a little something in a pretty pot that is contained on top of that tank. All righty, Grace, you're welcome. Sudabe Jafari, you're amazing. Sudabe, I'm going to see you for tea or wine here at Shea Hoffman on Friday, but I'll, I'll private message you. Um, Linda, great, thank you. Okay, final two questions. Last call for final two questions. While all that craziness is happening, I think this is our wackiest live Facebook Live we've done. I am so sorry, Instagram peeps. Not only do you have that bright light, but it's been crazy here today. I promise we'll correct that shot for next week. Here you go. Give us a follow at decorating.genius, at decorating.genius. That's where you'll find us on Instagram. But if you do want to know what we're doing uh, at our design studio, that would be at IDH Designs, at IDH Designs.
Okay, dears, I don't think there are any more questions. And um, there you go. I think we're going to sign off. Next week, I will be talking to you about how to renovate a bathroom without just losing your mind, fighting with your spouse, wanting to just sell your house instead. Okay? So we'll be talking about that Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Mwah. So long to you up there on Instagram land. Mwah. So long to you on Facebook land. See you guys soon. Bye-bye now.